Hi there, everybody. This is Tenacious Earl with the first short stop of the year 2020. Um, I would say it's the first of the new decade, but I really don't feel like the 20s has started until January 1, 2021. Kind of a, a little bit of a uh, pedantic argument here, but that's okay. That's for everybody. Everybody has an opinion about this. So um, with that said, I wanted to do a short stop on a couple of Stratomatic baseball questions that I see pop up quite a bit, both here in the comments as well as in the Facebook group. And the first question is, Earl, how do you score a ground ball to such and such infielder? And then it could be whichever letter designation, A, B, or C. And just to get my opinion on record here, I really just don't care enough at this point to have a, a firm opinion about this. And my reasoning for this is I have tracked my projects using ball score, ball stat, strat PC. And what I tend to care the least about, and when it comes to all the stats that are generated, are the fielding stats. I find myself looking at the, those the very, very least as far as who's got the best fielding percentage and had the most put outs, blah, blah, blah. It really just never seems that intriguing to me. And so now I came to Stratomatic looking for more opportunities to score ball games. And because uh, I do like scorekeeping, but um, so, so there is an aspect of this that is a little bit fascinating to me, but I think once you just start rolling tens of hundreds of games, you just, it, that just sort of like leaves and you're not so worried about it. So that's kind of my short answer is I don't really care. Now I would just say a is a hard grounder. So for me, like if you just use your logic and say, if it's a hard grounder and it's, let's say the first baseman, the first baseman is going to have more time to be able to get over to first and cover. So, you know, you might want to go with the three, six, three. Yeah, that's probably fine. If it's a slow roller, then you might need the pitcher's help, or who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe the maybe the catcher r hustling his rear end down the line because maybe it's more of a swinging bunt or something. I don't know. But you know, you use your logic. You can think through it. A is a hard grounder. B is sort of like medium. C is uh, a slow poke. So there, that, that's that. But again. I don't really have a hard and fast rule for you. The second one is handling stolen bases uh, and strategies for when to steal or when to hold runners. And um, I, my philosophy is I like feel. I like doing what seems right at the time using sort of your intuition um, as to whether or not it's a good time to do it or not. Um, you know, if you were to go with the analytic proven method, you would say anything under a 75%, you aren't going to try stealing. I don't think that's going to be accurate for the way Major League Baseball usually carries itself out. But you are the manager when you're playing these games. If you're playing a solo project, then you're going to be both managers. That makes it a little more awkward. If you're playing like face-to-face -face in a league or something, then you can make it as conservative or liberal, um, aggressive, whatever that you want. But um, as far as like holding runners, again, I feel like especially with basic strat, they give you the base number, like an A is a 1 to 15. If they wanted it to be just a stock, easy thing, like, oh, you're always going to hold the runner, then they could just say, okay, well, A is 1 to 14, which assumes a 1 uh, rated catcher, the best rated catcher as far as his defensive ability, and then you just subtract uh, one, two, or three from that number. So, in, so to me, there is some validity to not hold the runner. I guess this is this would be maybe a um, a, a short, quick, dirty way to think about it. I would say a B. You sh you should hold a B runner and above pretty much any time at first base and maybe an A at second base um, and above 
pretty much any time. With two outs, I would just say uh, maybe you hold your C runner at first. That's a that's an optional thing. It's and again, I would say just use your intuition. Does it feel like a good time based on the score? Um, do it, you really not want that runner to get in the scoring position? But you also run the risk that if you get that ground ball with the pluses, then that's a first, a third, and then you've got maybe even more trouble. So that's just sort of a, a quick way, and that's with basic. I, I do think the super advanced stealing system was designed in order for that if you use that religiously in your project in a super advanced setting, um, even the ones that have like the good lead one to three, bad lead one, you know, if you if you do that, like as far as like the the the, the D20 range, um, you know, you should get pretty good stats as far as how, or you know, within reason. I mean, obviously, stolen bases are going to be based somewhat on how many times guys get on base too. So as long as their hitting numbers are uh, comm commensurate and you know they don't have extra runners uh, in front of them on second base or whatever which would prevent them from doing a steal you should get close so I'm hoping this is helping I, I just I guess my overall thought is not to stress about these kinds of things too much if, you, if you've watched enough baseball to know how things are done I don't think you're going to go wrong whatever you do with either of these things um, in the short term you know in one game, you may feel bad if you send a runner and he gets thrown out and maybe you shouldn't have. Or you might feel bad that you held a guy that, and then it goes through uh, on a single because of the ground ball with the pluses. Just don't sweat it. It's a project. It's supposed to be fun. We're supposed to find ways to do this that bring us joy and don't let us, and don't bring us a whole bunch of worry about if this result's going to be true or not. It's fine. It's all good. So uh, hit like if you like this video. Um, and I, I will say, for me to be the one saying not stress out, because I am a little bit of a, a person who gets anxious and seems to hold on to things a little too long at times. But this is really one of those situations where it should be cool. Hit the like if you like this video. If you want to see more of these, leave a comment. If you have any topic you'd like covered, or um, if you have a question you'd like answered, feel free to leave it. Uh, for Tabletop Earl, this is Tenacious Earl for the next shortstop. Hope you guys keep rolling, and we will see you soon here on Tabletop Baseball Plus.